Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today I learned a lot, another lesson, very, very heavy one, from uh, my attitude towards to reach a conclusion before hearing what the people are thinking, what the people are talking about. I am a member of a board of one of an international organization. And I was reluctant to carry on because I found that I have my contribution to its development is minimum. And even I offered this to the chairman last year, and he said, no, please stay with me. Quite often I say something very heavy on the social media, like uh, civil liberty, like uh, uh, rights of people, right, uh, advocacy, for the poor and people and, 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 and all these sort of things. We sometimes upset certain governments, but I do not tarnish individuals, religion, or any government. And all of a sudden, I found that the CEO of this organization calling me. Very, very rare such a CEO will call me. I thought, actually, this would be a big news or big things, which I reached the conclusion because of my activity, maybe the government does not like me to stay on the board. And I was preparing myself to make a statement and send it to him either by audio or a written message. Overnight, the devil was playing with my mind and blowing my mind at the same time. I have to call him, you have to call his assistant, you have to call his deputy, you have to write him a message, you have to have to have, all this you have come to me by the devil, unfortunately. That's why my advice, don't ever let yourself to be in the hands of the devil. I slept a very difficult night at that time because it's not what's happening and I want to uh, send my conclusion as if I would like to be ahead of what news that he's going to give it to me. Next day, uh, this uh, in the, uh, uh, brother or this uh, nice man, uh, polite man, respectable man, called me in the morning and he explained to me the issue. I was trying to be ahead of him, but I decided to wait and listen and see what he's going to say. He told me, do you know Mr. So-and-so in our annual uh, general, in our, uh, uh, general uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, general uh, council, or what do you call it? Uh, I said, yes, I know him, but I don't know him in person, so I can be with him. General Assembly, General Assembly. I said, why? I said, because all the banks in our country decided not to work with us, apart from one bank, which we have a relationship, good relationship with the manager. And he told us about this one name on the list of your board. Uh, I said, if my, I said, no, 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 it's not your name. It's the name of this individual. And we have approached him to try to ask him gently, kindly, respectfully, to step down so the bank could be able to transfer the fund. The man refused utterly, and his answer was really not expected. He could have be, this man could be right because this is his right, you see. But he, this man and somebody else have to understand that we are not living in a just world anymore. A world with no value, a world with no proper culture, a world with no, no dignity for a human being, nothing, nothing, nothing. And those people are trying to find a fault in your organization to stop it, to deviate it, to overtake it, to destroy it, and to delay its action. But the man was very, very, uh, giving them very unexpected answer from a man at the age of 70 plus, or whatever you call it. So I said, no, I know I met him once or twice, but I cannot talk to him as, but if you want me to travel to his country, I can do that. But I said, no, no, there is no need do that. From this incident, which happened to me a uh, few months ago, I learned a lot. First of all, don't jump to conclusion before the other party finish speaking to you. 
Second, don't be impatient by realizing what people could be telling you. Thirdly, a respectable individual that this individual in the General Assembly of this organization refusing, despite the fact he is living in Europe and he knows how bad Islamophobia, how bad is the unjust system in Europe and America and others, and so on, so on, so on. And he knew that he is the only one who become a hurdle or a difficulty in the existence of this organization because if they lose this bank, there's no other banks who can transfer money for them. So my dear young people, brothers and sisters, in this work, there's, there's, there's not absolute right and wrong. There's a lot of gray area, unfortunately. But unfortunately, you are controlled by a very, very unjust system. Unjust, unfair, discriminatory system. Maybe anti-Islamic system. Maybe anti-whatever you call it. Anti-Christ or anti-humanity or whatever you call it. For this, each one of us have to understand that it's more important for me is to step down and let the organization grow. I can, I can prepare the second generation, third generation, fourth generation, but my existence there is not of added value since I only come once to every two years to a two hours meeting. Learn these three points, please. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.